Live. You are live. We are live. Hello, everyone. My name is Brandon Leon. I'm joined here with Keith Collins. And we are here for brewery number 12, Brew and Real Estate. We basically, it's our version of happy hour where we go around and talk about what's going on in the real estate market, uh, what you need to know about. Uh, we're going to talk, we're going to do real estate updates. We're going to be talking about some of the landmines uh, that you should be thinking about. If you're thinking about buying or selling home or in the process, there are some serious landmines right now that you want to know about uh, so you can uh, protect your investment. Uh, but again, my name is Brandon Leon with Better Homes and Gardens. I'm a realtor here in the Placer, Sacramento County area, and I'm joined with my friend, Keith Collins. I'm Keith Collins with Movement Mortgage, and I'm really excited about this new look. Look at this new yeah. look. It's yeah. so sweet. Yeah. We're, we're like grownups. We are no longer babies. It's like grownups, but not yet grownups. <laughs> we're pre grownups. I like it. <laughs> Beautiful. Well, uh, I'd, I actually want to jump right in. Um, mm -hmm. I, my thoughts is there will be one week a month where we will share kind of the nuts and bolts of all the numbers and we'll give you all of the update of what's going on in, uh, in real estate in the Sacramento Placer and El Dorado counties. But uh, for today, we're going to go over just a few things and uh, we're excited, like he said, about this new look. Our goal is to bring you lots of value. Uh, we're, we, we are here to, uh, to help you guys um, through your process and, uh, and we're excited about it. So let's jump right in. So we're going to be talking about landmines. Whoa, 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 whoa. What are you drinking, sir? Oh, yeah, that's whoa, kind of whoa, whoa, whoa. All right. Sorry. I, I apologize. I got, I was ready to share some. I've been shamed into drinking on this one. <laughs> <laughs> Blue it's, right it's, it's in the name, Keith. It's in the name. <laughs> so today I am drinking some bourbon. Uh, this is actually Tumbling Dice. Tumble, is it tumble and dice or is it tumble it, and dice? It's tumble and dice. Tumble and dice. Tumble and dice. Oh, tumble and like dice. Tumble and dice. Barrel. It's barrel proof, so it's 109.7 proof. It's got some heft on it. It's a high rye mash bill made by Deadwood, bottled in Kentucky, uh, and it is delicious. It's actually got, uh, got a good amount of spice, which normally I don't like a lot of spice, but, uh, this is a, a solid pick. Uh, shout out to uh, to Rocco's in uh, in West Sac, where we like to get a lot of our quality bottles. I feel like he should be donating to the show. I think he might. I think he may in the future. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's high quality. How about you, Keith? What are you drinking today? I'm drinking the uh, the Jefferson's uh, Ocean at Sea Cast Strength. It's not about the proof, but this is one twelve. Um, I know there's an interesting <laughs> story. Drink high proof. It's not about the proof, but uh, so the story this is an interesting bottle for me because uh, a really good buddy of mine in the industry um, hired an awesome person from us, and I told him, "Dude, you've got one of the best people in mortgage that you just hired. Thank you, but it's going to cost you a very nice bottle of bourbon." He already brought that up. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, my I goodness. Know. Where's the tumble? Uh, so he brought this to me, and uh, I'm, I'm checking it out, man. It's uh, it's pretty cool. The idea behind this, and I'll wrap it up, and I, I don't know if this is really true, but so they say they're aged at sea, and they literally, like, put them in barrels on a boat and somehow do their no, that's true. I don't, I don't know if that's true or not. No that's way that's correct. No way that's correct. But, fake, fake news. <laughs> but every single week we'll be bringing something nice to you uh, and we'll be, we'll be having a, a little drink. Cool. It'll be different every week. But all right, now we can jump right into it. So if we're looking at the numbers, okay, uh, I'm going to give you just the quickest real estate update ever. Uh, we have uh, currently for sale 2,075 homes in the greater Sacramento, Placer, and El Dorado counties. Uh, this time last year, uh, we had 4,425 homes for sale. So less than 50% inventory than we had this time last year. That is insane. Uh, not only that, our pendings are uh, pendings, the homes that have gone into contract are at an all time high. Uh, so it, it is bananas, like as Keith would say. It is bananas. It, oh, it, so I, good, man. Every single banana award. 
I've been telling, I've been telling uh, a lot of people in my 11 years, and this isn't to scare you because I think everyone has a specific uh, strengths, right? And it, it is extremely difficult right now for buyers. Uh, and I say that so that you know to be patient because every buyer will eventually find that great home for them. But you have to be patient right now because there's so much competition. We have 10, 15, 20 offers sometimes on houses. So it is a really, really heavy seller's market. Uh, also, what we also want to look at is that there's 0.8 months of inventory. Months of inventory meaning if no other houses were listed, we would run out of homes in 0.8 months. So a month, we're out of houses. Yeah. If no, if no, yeah, if no new homes came on the market, on the market less than a month. Now this time last year we had 1.8 months of inventory. So we are we are at this extreme. Uh, hard time with just not having enough inventory to go around. The new home sales are, are, are increasing, but not at the pace where we can actually meet demand. So that's kind of uh, what's going on in real estate right now in our area. So let's jump into some landmines, Keith. Landmines. Okay. Landmines. Landmines. I'd be excited about these, but it's, it's an interesting thing to kind of think about. I think the first one is, um, Unpaid taxes, right? And so unpaid taxes are kind of a big thing that that can come up uh, in real estate and causes causes kind of a big delay. And so there's a few different reasons why. Uh, one is they changed credit reporting uh, maybe about a year ago to uh, unpaid liens uh, and things are not actually listed in the credit report. So sometimes uh, we don't know ahead of time if there's potentially some unpaid taxes and we won't find that out until you're actually pretty deep into the process. So. Um, there is some disclosures and questions that are asked that if customer has unpaid taxes, um, but sometimes may, maybe they're not aware. So one of those landmines is, is potentially, you know, unpaid taxes because you can't close a home loan with, uh, let's say, unpaid income taxes. So if you filed your 2019 taxes and you haven't paid the the money owed uh, for that at, that at that point in time, we can't close a home loan. So you either need to enter into a payment agreement on the property. Uh, or with the IRS for us. And then we have to use that payment in the debt to income ratio, which may you might not qualify for, um, or those have to be paid in full at the time of close. And so kind of with that, the reason, one of the reasons why we're bringing up the unpaid taxes, there's two things that are occurring right now that um, have me a little worried potentially about the future and uh, of seeing maybe more unpaid taxes. One of those is unemployment benefits. Mm -hmm. Unemployment benefits. Uh, so, so you uh, lose your job and you claim unemployment and receive unemployment checks from the federal government. That can be taxable income. And I don't think a lot of people because I've heard people say like, oh, I'm getting twenty eight hundred dollars a month tax free. I'm making more money. It's in, in a lot of times it's not tax free. It's actually taxable. So when you go to file your taxes, let's say in twenty twenty one for twenty twenty. If you weren't collecting for that, you might have a you might have a decent sized tax bill that's going to prevent you from potentially buying a home if you've got a job again. The other thing would be this uh, just got rolled out last week and it's basically uh, the social security income payroll tax deferral. So if you're receiving social security income, there's a payroll tax. Hi, ah, he's bringing it up on the screen. Isn't that awesome? We've got this great guy behind the screens running this thing. But um, so, so basically um, as of uh, September, social security income um, is the payroll tax on that is being deferred until the first of the year. It's not eliminated. So uh, the money that you're saving, don't spend that. Keep that because when you file your taxes, you're going to have to pay that back. And if that's a, a, if you don't have that money at that point in time, potentially, or maybe that money was going to be allocated to go buy a house for down payment. Now, all of a sudden, you're in a place where we're going to have to enter into payment agreement with the IRS or you're going to have to pay that money to be able to buy the home. So those are kind of the two the two ones I think associated with unpaid taxes that we might see more of in the future just because there are things that people aren't aware of right now. Yeah, I think you brought up a good point. And that, that's kind of our goal with this is to maybe bring up some things that you might not be aware about, uh, aware of at the moment. So I think another huge landmine is fires, just the fires with everything going on right now. Uh, I think it's at 2.2 million acres. Uh, it, it is it is insane. We have had the most fires in history in California. Uh, even right now, uh, the biggest wildfire in California history is literally going on right now. And I think it's like 27 percent contained. I mean, it's not even it's not even close uh, to where 
to, to where it would be contained and how, how many, let's see, the, it's the, called the August Complex Fire and it's 471,000 acres. Uh, and it, it has, it's been mostly open area, but that's just one of fire. So it started as, uh, as 37 separate fires and has come into one. And again, if you were to just see a map of California and what's going on right now, the top six, Okay, the top six fires right there. So of the uh, of the top 20, for 20 largest California wildfires, the top six have been this year. So that just tells you kind of where we're at. And so there's going to be effects from that. There, there are going to be consequences from that, not just people losing their homes, but uh, real estate values in general. Uh, also, uh, when we think about the fire insurance and, and the impact that that's gonna have, uh, you know, Keith and I have worked together closely for quite some time, and there's nothing worse than having somebody that's buying in a rural area and they are going to get fire insurance. I think it's going to be about you know six eight hundred dollars, and I mean we had a client that that it was like thirty five hundred dollars. Uh, and I had a customer, I had a customer last month looking for a three hundred thousand dollar manufactured home, and and we knew it was going to be high because it was in a rural area, um, but we got into contract, we got a quote, and it was. We were thinking eh, it can't be more than about two thousand potentially based on this area because it's rural but not like super rural. It was uh, it was almost eight thousand dollars for the fire insurance, and so you know we've really looked at trying to get quotes ahead of time. So that's another kind of going back to that line mine there is if you are looking in rural areas, um, and and some of these areas you're like hey, you know when you think of rural sometimes you think of like like no houses, but I mean you know areas in Placerville are considered rural areas in Grass Valley, right? I mean areas in Auburn, uh, areas in Loomis, Loomis is having uh, there are some areas in Loomis, which, you know, again, it's not the city of Roseville, what I like to call Stucco Central, right? Slab Foundation, Slab Foundation, you know, Stucco Exterior Tile Roof. Um, but I mean, there's areas in Loomis and Newcastle and Penryn that are having really, really high prices associated with fire. So if you are looking in those rural areas, that's one of those things that you need to be aware of ahead of time and maybe even have some quotes because you get in a contract and, you know, kind of your monthly obligation for that house could be hundreds, hundreds of dollars or more, more per month based on, based on the fire insurance. Also, can you get it? You know, yeah. some places you can't even get it. So yeah, so just just to backtrack just a little bit. Uh, Sorry. We, we, no, that's good. No, everything you said was right on. We, we have fire insurance for houses that have are at high fire risk. Now, the California uh, Fair Plan is basically supposedly they guarantee that you will get fire insurance, but it will be at a much higher price. Uh, as you can see, you know, thirty five hundred, eight thousand. Uh, so you will be able to get it, but it, I mean, at that price, who can afford that, right? Uh, so it puts you in a tough position. But uh, let's say that you are in a disaster area, Keith, or even you know there, there's evacuation scares. Like, are there are any programs or anything that would help with that? Well, I think there's two things. One is you know usually when there's a when FEMA declares an area a natural ha uh, um, a natural disaster, they usually do by county. And so you might buy, be buying a home that um, hasn't been impacted. The fires are actually pretty far away. Um, but yet that county has been declared a FEMA disaster area. And uh, it could happen the day before the close of escrow. Your, your boxes are packed. You're ready to move on Friday. And all of a sudden FEMA classifies your county as a disaster area. Now all of a sudden, from a loan standpoint, we have to send the appraiser back out to verify that a house hasn't been impacted before we close. Because we don't, we don't know. The lender doesn't know that. Uh, these are national, you know, these are national lenders, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, FHA. They want to verify that the house hasn't been impacted if it is in a uh, a, uh, a a FEMA natural disaster area. So I think that you know that's not going to happen all the time, but but that's definitely something that could that could happen and 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 to be aware of. And then I guess the other thing is this happened. We we did a few of these with the campfire, the fires that we had kind of in in Redding and Chico area and and um, and uh, Paradise. Um, there's a loan program with FHA. It's called a disaster relief loan program. And if you were in an area that was uh, deemed a natural disaster by FEMA and the home that you're in, uh, whether you own or rented, um, was declared uh, deemed inhabitable, uh, you were eligible, if you qualify, right? You have to qualify so from an income to debt standpoint, but you're qualified for, you're, you're eligible for a loan program through FHA, which is 100% financing. So you could potentially find a replacement property with zero down. Um, also, um, if we can, if we can show that there was adequate insurance to cover the mortgage on that house, you can potentially also exclude the debt because that is one of the challenges that happens sometimes when someone has a house that was burned down and and then they have a mortgage 
they potentially have insurance for a period. Uh, they have that they have the mortgage payment for a period of time, and that mortgage mortgage, sorry, the insurance company that they have hasn't paid them out yet, right? right. To pay off their mortgage and, and then get their money back. That can potentially prevent somebody from qualifying because we still have that mortgage payment we got to hit them with, even though they don't unfortunately have the house. Well, if we do, if we can prove that there was insurance coverage that would at least cover the mortgage, we wouldn't we wouldn't factor that debt on the new purchase. If that makes sense. So there are options for people, creative options, in fact, if you've if you've been impacted in one of these areas and are looking to relocate to another area. And, and I know Keith just went over a lot there, but if, if you have any questions about that, specifically reach out to him and his team. They'd be happy to answer any questions you have. Um, but man, I mean, we don't know the effects that the fires are going to have in general uh, as far as the longevity of just house prices. But we do know with the fires, uh, with people losing their homes, that you know, insurance costs will go up. So everybody that because of COVID was wanting to move out into the rural areas now it might be a little bit more difficult to do so uh because uh, the fire insurance it, it it's inevitable it will go up so those are just things to consider uh so in the future uh you know as i said our goal is to bring you quality information uh every single week so uh something's important that's important for us to note is the pre-foreclosures so i know keith you and i have talked so many times uh, about uh, about some different options like forbearance, right? We have several videos on that. Uh, but these pre foreclosures, it, it, it it's hard to see when you look at when you look at our area as a whole and you see all of the pre foreclosures and that meaning that there has been a notice of default uh, filed. Um, so can you talk a little bit more about that process? and what your thoughts on are, are just a brief synopsis because we're going to get some numbers for you guys. Um, but it, just speak a little bit to the pre-foreclosure and the foreclosure process from a loan uh, perspective. Yeah. So, I mean, when we say pre-foreclosure that you, you hit it there, it's, it's a notice of default. So basically, uh, and I don't have the exact dates, but I think it's I think it's 90, 120 days. So someone goes 90, 90 to 120 days of unpaid mortgage. The lender has the ability to file a notice of default. And a notice of default is just an official record that there are certain period of time past due in the mortgage. And that allows the lender to start the foreclosure process because then there's another waiting period after the notice of default before they can actually foreclose. Now, California has a memorandum and I think nationally we have a memorandum now until after the first of the year of uh, halting foreclosures and, uh, and evictions. And so we're just, you know, it, it's it's interesting to see is like, so even if we just had a normal market, this is kind of where I'm thinking. So even if we had a normal market where you had just normal, because there, there always is a small amount of notice of defaults, foreclosures, and short sales. That's just, that's always present in real estate. Now, in 2008, 2009, 2010, we had an abnormal amount, like a very much abnormal amount, and that affected home prices. So we, yeah. always, we always have some. Well, we, we have them, but they're not actually happening. They're being deferred. So right. how many are going to be deferred? Uh, and and how quickly at, at, will they hit the market? Are they all going to come at once? Are they going to be spread out over a period of time? And, and what impact is that potentially going to have? And so then when you have, you know, you have these notes of defaults being deferred, you have the eviction process being deferred, um, you know, as an eviction process, you know, you, you have people that that really isn't potentially going to cause more foreclosures from an eviction standpoint, but potentially the landlord, right? The landlord is not receiving income. They're maybe not making a mortgage payment. So are you potentially going to have those, those people who, are saying that they can't be evicted, so the landlord can't put somebody else in there to receive rent, and then and then there's potentially going to be a, a notice of default filed later. So, I think what would be interesting, and this is what we're going to dive into, is just kind of a year over year change on notice of defaults. Is are we seeing uh, more notice of defaults filed now than we were this time last year? Um, uh, and 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 then again, just you know, time will tell. I do believe that our local market has a lot of um, properties that can be absorbed, meaning we are extremely low on inventory. And so there could be, I mean, that we, we need more properties and, and more and more people are continuing to, to come up to our area. So, um, an increase in foreclosures actually could be a welcome thing for home buyers because now there's, there's more properties. So, so I don't, I don't think it's a sky is falling kind of scenario, but it really is going to be interesting to see just kind of year over year, how much more of an increase we have seen. And that's what we're, Open to bring next week. Yeah, love it. So uh, let's move on. 
uh, every single week now we've decided to kind of let you know exactly where interest rates are at. Um, so you can kind of get an idea of week over week. Uh, you hear all these things uh, on the news or on television or online about where interest rates are. So I wanted you to get it straight from Keith's mouth. So Keith, talk about a little bit, a little bit about interest rates. Yeah, I mean, interest rates are still, still uh, remain really low. I think that we're going to be in a sustained low rate in environment. And, and just based on what's happening in the economy or um, or geopolitically or really within the stock market, you can see these kind of small changes and they're going to be up or down. But I mean, we're still really in the twos for the most part for very well qualified borrowers. I just quoted 2.125 and a 15 year fixed on a purchase, 2.125. That's crazy. Um, and, you know, 2.8 to 3%, 3.1 is going to be kind of that range on conventional 20% down stuff with not a lot of fees. Um, um, yeah, I mean, their interest rates are still great. Low, uh, high twos, low threes, 30 year fixed loans. It's fantastic. That is fantastic. So if any of you have questions uh, about getting you know, pre-qualified, pre-approved to buy a home, uh, you can reach out to Keith and his team. He'll be able to help you guys. Uh, and let's talk about the loan program of the week. What, what's one program that stands out to you, you want to talk, out, uh, talk about besides the FHA disaster relief program? Yeah, so we have a cool program. I mean, it's a 3% down conventional program. It's for first-time home buyers. Uh, there are income restrictions to it, but it has no monthly mortgage insurance, which is really cool. So mortgage insurance is a monthly cost in addition to your regular payment uh, that you traditionally have when you put less than 20% down. And that, you know, let's say a $300,000 home, that, that payment can be anywhere from, you know, $150 to $250 a month. We have a program that for well-qualified people, good credit scores, um, um, where we don't have that monthly mortgage insurance and that can significantly reduce your payment or potentially allow you to qualify for more home um, at that same payment, which is really cool. Yeah. Yeah, mortgage, uh, we have a 3% down conventional home loan, no monthly mortgage insurance. Beautiful. You well, got it. Yeah, love it. Well, we're keeping it short and sweet today. We wanted to share a few of the landmines, talk about some interest rates, uh, talk about some options for you. We'll be back with some more value next week. Uh, now, if you're dealing with any of these landmines or maybe there, you think there might be some blind spots that you uh, that you don't know about, feel free to reach out to Keith or myself. There might be a good option for you right now to refinance at, uh, at the super low interest rates. Uh, or there are a lot of people that are thinking about moving out of the area, don't quite know where to start or, you know, thinking about taxes and all these different things. Um, you might be in the position where you might be able to maximize your profit by selling your home. Uh, feel free to reach out to me. Would love to help in that process. Um, other than that, we will come back next week uh, with uh, some more uh, delicious libations. I love saying that word. <laughs> delicious or libations? Both. <laughs> Together. Oh, I love it. Man. So this is Brandon and Keith signing off. Brewery number 12. And we'll see you guys next week. Don't forget, if you have any questions, feel free to let us know. High five. High five it out. Good game. And stay the better right there. Cheers. Cheers. See ya. Thank you so much. See ya.